If there was a Hall of Fame, a Cooperstown for movie directors, they'd need more than just a plaque to honor Martin Scorsese. They'd probably need an entire wing. Marty is more than a filmmaker. He's a champion of film. The fact that Marty asked me to was enough. Obviously, this guy knew what he was doing. Obviously, he, to me, is the definitive filmmaker of our time. There is no greater director on earth. And the Oscar goes to Martin Scorsese. I just wish I could have been a good enough actor to have been directed by you. Thank you. Films that I that I constantly revisited or, or saw repeatedly uh, held up longer for me over the years, um, not because of plot but because of character and um, a very different approach to story. You know, just for example, talk about Hitchcock and we, we um, see his films in the 50s as they came out. Um, Strangers on a Train, Rear Window, all the way up to uh, uh, you know Vertigo. Uh, North by Northwest and into Psycho. But I think over the years, the films of, of Hitchcock that I enjoy watching repeatedly, uh, The Wrong Man, for example, as a picture that I, I, I've used repeatedly as an example of um, um, mood, paranoid style, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful New York uh, uh, location photography, uh, was a picture that I screened for Michael Chapman, Paul Schrader, and everybody for Taxi Driver. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe ultimately it's one of the reasons I said Bernard Herrmann had to do the score. You know, I think so. And, and uh, uh, I talked about the uh, paranoid camera moves, uh, the feelings of threat. Uh, when, uh, if you know the picture, Henry Fonda has to go to the uh, pay in, uh, paying us insurance uh, in Queens. I, I, was, I, was, I grew up a little bit, I grew up till about seven years old in Queens. So Me too. The, the Jamaica and that whole area. So it was kind of interesting to see it, but he's, he's standing behind the uh, counter and the woman's looking over and she, you see Henry Fonda from her point of view. And she thinks he's a robber because he, he had just robbed this place earlier and she thinks he's come back. Uh, and the way the camera moves, her perception, excellent, excellent, excellent bit part players because they could, they could kill you if you don't get the right person. The fear, the anxiety, the paranoia, it's all done through the camera and the person's face. It's the same. I find, I find that that is more interesting to me. So when I, when I, I, I saw Rebecca maybe 10 times, 14 times, and but at a certain point I said, I know. There's no, for me, the style Hitchcock in that film is only in the sequence when Mrs. Danvers shows the, um, uh, uh, Rebecca's room to Joan Fontaine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it. For the rest of it, I know the plot and it's not interesting anymore. Frank! Are you okay? I've never felt better in my life. How are you? I'm good. Good. Beyond the fact that it was a New York story, that's oh, what turned yeah, you on, this whole got, notion yeah, of this kind of emotional effect. struggle exactly. with some kind of redemption or some kind yeah. of something. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, um, uh, I think, in fact, what almost held me back a little bit was, you know, the fact that it was another New York story in that, how do you shoot an ambulance at night in New York? I mean, I've shot a lot of scenes in night, at night in New York. What different way yeah. can I find to, to do these scenes? And but the, the first night I went out with a real ambulance, though, I figured it out, which was the hallucinatory aspect of it. When you're sitting in the front. Yeah. Uh, the, the spinners are going, the rock and roll is playing, uh, cabs are attacking you. You know, it's, yeah. it's like uh, suddenly you, you, you realize uh, <laughs> you think you see things that are not there. Yeah. You know, and if you stay in there long enough, uh, it's quite, it's quite, a, it's quite I mean, an it experience. It has an effect on the brain. Yeah, it has an effect, a hallucinatory effect in the brain, yeah. I think. Trespasses. His name's Amsterdam. A man who will fight for freedom. A man who will kill for power. Each of the five points is a finger. When I close my hand, it becomes a fist.
particular case, we were, we needed to find, it's an ambitious story, an ambitious film. Weaving I should so say. many themes and so many weaving groups. Weaving the politics, weaving in um, the anthropology of the time, too, what these gangs were really like. Pretty much more like, they were, more, they were actually more aligned with the Anglo-Saxon gangs and Anglo-Saxon tribes. Uh, yeah. So they had tribal warfare in a way. The, the um, Irish Catholics, to a certain extent, um, had a, a culture, to a certain extent, had, had a tribal culture also. So that uh, if you look back at what the Anglo-Saxon tribes were like, the Celts, the gods were gods of war, in yeah. a way. So um, I'm also interested in how civilization breaks down. And when it breaks down, it becomes a tribe, and smaller than that, a clan, and smaller than that, a family, the blood unit. You know? And so when everything is taken away, which is what happened downtown, um, to the extent that it was known around the world, the worst corners. The worst corner in the world was called the Five Points. Even Charles Dickens, when he came here in the 1850s, made a visit to the Five Points and wrote about it in his American Notes. Said it's the worst thing. Worst, London can't compare. London is heaven compared to what the Five Points is like. We have nothing like nothing five like points. this. And so, so I'm fascinated by what happens uh, to groups of people stuck in a situation, uh, oppressed uh, politically, economically, and how they, what form do they do they take? Uh, Again, what well, seems central, I and mean, this is a, sim a giant simplification, but so much of what it seems to me your work has to do about is a individuals or families caught up in some kind of huge conflict mm -hmm. of which at the end there is either redemption or in fact mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. death. Yeah. You know, they yeah. fall yeah. off the, you know. Like casino. Yeah. Like yeah. casino. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. In the end, you know, yeah. it's resolved by either death or some coming to. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a little tricky. Gangs in New York is tricky because the action, there's a lot of action in it. And it's a pretty traditional story, too. A young boy has to avenge the death of his father, etc. Is this Leonardo Di uh, DiCaprio? DiCaprio yeah. He's in? He's in it, definitely oh, in man, it. Oh, man. Yeah. So it's, De Niro, he's great. DiCaprio. Yeah, I mean, it'll be very interesting, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the thing about it is no that... No wonder you want to make this. Yeah, I'm dying to make this picture for years, but because it, it's more about the history of the city. Yeah. And the history of the city being the history of America, really. Yeah. I think, particularly in the 19th century. And uh, I don't know. I mean... It's difficult because there is so much action in the picture. How does one deal with violence these days on, in cinema? Uh, especially after making Casino, where at the end of the film, uh, Joe Pesci and his brother are beaten to death with baseball bats uh, by their best friends. And when you do that, I don't, there's, no more to, there's no place to go, yeah, exactly. in a sense. It is the dead end of organized crime. It is the dead end of that kind of lifestyle. That's where you wind up. And uh, here... Are you coming? Shit heel. I'm standing here. You make the move. You make the move. It's your move. I'm trying you. You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? 
Well, who the hell else are you talking to? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Oh, yeah? Huh? Okay. Huh? 